Hi guys, happy Witchy Wednesday. So yes, I do have a cold and I don't know what is going on. But it's rather um, annoying, to be honest. So, back to um, George Pickingill. Sorry guys, my lips are so chapped. Okay, so. <clears throat> right back to George Picking Hill, and I have a little charm that I want to share with you guys that I did last night for a friend, and it worked, and it was good, and it's great, so you guys will like it. Alright, where'd I go? Okay, so we left off with, um, so Picking Hill traveled across the country following his profession, and his... Oh, and this <laughs> allowed him to recruit the priestess of the Nine Covens. Tra traveling horsemen, sales horsemen, literally. So, yeah, that's different. That'd be weird. Would you like to buy a horse? Yeah, I'm going to do that to somebody. It was only in his later years when he retired from horse dealing that he worked in the um, Landwin, Canewin area as a farm laborer. So, yeah, really, he was not a drunk or, a, you know, wh whatever they said about him. So, unfortunately, this image of picking ill as an educated man is disputed by some of his um, descendants who has recently been in contact with this writer. So, okay, maybe he had a few problems, but who does not? Who doesn't have a cross to carry? And why do you want to burden somebody uh, somebody else with that, you know, giant cross you bear? I don't. So, um, let's see. So she has researched the... Wait a minute. So she... I don't know who she is. So she has researched the Picking Hill family history and uncovered uh, documentary evidence relating to births baptisms, marriages, and deaths. Now, one of the documents that she had found in the Essex Parish records is Old George Pickingill's marriage certificate. He signed it with a cross. So, possibly indicating that he was not able to write his name. Now, according to Bill Liddell, each of the nine covens was an um, um, autonomous unit, and um, once they were established, Pickingill had no direct control over them. So he did, however, sexually induct the priestesses and gave them a black book um, that taught them the basics of how to cast a circle and summon and control spirits and elementals. So yeah, it also provided information on astrology, media, mediumship, and geomantic divinations, as well as a few simple rules for administering a coven. And we're co covine, a coven, C-O-V-I-N-E, where that's the context that this is in. So this all sounds like the typical magical workings of the contemporary cunning folk. The rituals practiced by the nine di differed uh, considerably from the old style picking ill family tradition. So, for instance, they worked naked in their rituals, adopted um, special craft names, and took the measure when initiating new members. So, in the nine, the magister or master um, delineated a physical circle using a staff or wand and sealed it three times against harmful influences or baneful influences. So, um, this the assembled witches then danced around the circle witterchins to banish any negativity. The master then went around the circle, consecrating it with fire, and the, maje the ma magistra, mistress or lady, um, repeated the procedure using water. Now the coven members were blessed as they um, entered the circle and took up a uh, position standing alternatively, male and female. So the mistress, or the magister, stood in the east facing the lady in the west. So he calls down the moon on her, and she re 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 reciprocates by calling down the sun on him. Now the nine covens adopted the French craft practice that only a man could initiate a woman and a woman initiate a man that is practiced in modern Wicca. <laughs> so in the historical, traditional, and hereditary craft, however, it was the magister who was responsible for bringing in both sexes. Initiations usually took place um, on May Eve or Halloween, Hallows, and the candidate um, was hoodwinked, uh, bound with cords and scorched, lightly scorched. 
so and then the initiator breathed on certain parts of the candidate's body in a magical practice adapted from the M Moorish or uh, Saracen craft. So the concept behind this was to stimulate the psychic centers or chakras in the Eastern traditions in the initiate's body. D different, very different from, from Pickingill's craft and how he practiced. And I don't know. Different from the, the Nine Covens are different. So, um, in the Nine Covens, there was a um, tri-grattle tri yeah, tri system of initiation similar to the three rites of French witchcraft as used by George Pickingill's own coven in Canewin. So the minimum age for induction for men was 18, and for women it was either 19 or 20. It really was. This is crazy. So this was because in the old days sexual induction was a fraction or a feature of initiation process and was carried out by the magister for the females and the magistra or lady for the men. What about us? What about the? What about me? What about gay people? In the old craft, this is a uh, this sexual induction was regarded. Oh, it was regarded as a legitimate method for passing the power. Okay, I understand it now. I understand that now. To a chosen person of the opposite sex, it was probably the traditional reason why homosexuality was frowned upon by some old-style witches. The power included psychic abilities, familiars, and spirit guides, and ancestral knowledge um, that were actually transferred to the initiate during the sex act. That is amazing. Instead of, you know, um, in Gemma Gary's book, she talks about, you know, waiting until the person's dying and then, or, you know, wants to leave the coven and retire, and then they pass the power down to the next person. So now at the end of the rite, the new witch was presented with a card, a cord, as a sign that he or she was now an initiate, initiated member of the Brotherhood, as it was called, um, at entry into a coven of the Nine, a charge or legend was read out that Liddell claims was similar to the one used today in modern Wicca. So, the, this part is very confusing to me. So, it was based on the descriptions of the visitation of the Egyptian goddess Isis taken from the classical work The Golden Ass, um, together with the material from the Greek mysteries and Demeter and Persephone. So, according to Bill Liddell, this charge was inspired by magical neo-pagan rites devised in 1805 by a group of academics at Cambridge University. So, we will stop there. It just, I mean, it gets better and better and better, and I love it, and it's just incredible. So, so let me see if I can actually get this bookmarked here. Do I have paper? I hope I do. Yes, I do. I have like one little spot left down here for it. Where did I go? Alright, so we will pick back up there. But yeah, it just gets even more interesting, and it gets more interesting how he compares, um, how, you know, um, Wicca is not, or traditional witchcraft is not survived by Wicca. When a lot of people think Wicca is the old religion, no, it's not. It's very new, 1950s. So, and we will get into that a lot more, too, with, um, Gardner and how he came to, you know, form his coven. But he did have traditional, traditional craft training, and I don't know what happened. It wasn't popularly um, accepted, so he had to generalize it and make it publicly accepted. So he came up with Wicca, and a very fluffy New Age religion, so that people would understand and accept that more so than traditional witchcraft. Because traditional craft is very dark. Um, it's very dark. So, I mean, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. It's a very good. It's a very, you know, it's it's my faith. And it's, you know, been my faith for a long time. Okay. Coffee talk. 
so yeah, I just think it's pretty interesting. The whole, you know, the picking eel coven, and you know, just all the different, the nine covens, and it is. <clears throat> but we will get into um, how, uh, yeah, Wicca came about. Okay, let's see. Where are my notifications? Um, here we go. Let's see. Kim? Where is everything? Where are my comments? There are my comments. very interesting. It's been very interesting lately. All kinds of just amazing stuff happening. All the synchronicities are really amazing. It's just, it's just, it's been really, it really interesting. Alright, Cole McLaren. Hello, how are you? I have been waking up super early too, about 5.55 every morning odd. Today it was 4.44. Um, and then I said no. Uh-uh. Back to bed. And I actually slept until about 9.30. Skyly Sullivan, oh, I love you, my darling. Gustavo, your candles are going. Tina J, hi, my love, right on. Good health and good vibes. Thank you. 30, uh, today is 32 days, uh, or 31 days of Chico being, uh, yeah, completely amazing. I love it. It's so awesome. All right, J Phoenix, oh, my bro. Damn, I missed it. Oh, I'm sorry, my bro. Tina J, happy Monday, oh my gosh, yes, the weekend was long, and now the eclipse and the full moon, what eclipse, what happened, just trying to think positive thoughts, rainbows and butterflies, I love that, side note, my brother was really into Anton LaBay and loved Jane Mansfield, of course, I don't know, not really my thing, just kind of interesting, I think Anton LaBay was very, very, um, I think he was a, a good guy, I mean, he had good values, good morals, um, yeah, he was a very good guy, very misunderstood, you know, the Church of Satan, not the temple, the church, um, is, is what I support, so, I like, yeah, Anton, I think is a very, you know, good man, or was, uh, Gustavo, hello again, my brother, okay, um, okay, Tina J, I randomly pressed this video, and somehow I am exactly where I needed to be, 924-1506, crazy how this is timeless, <laughs> Creation through the astral body double. Wow, that was a long time ago. That was with the ceremonial magic. That's interesting. That is neat. I like that. I love your experiences. Tina J, I'm going to start with part one. Thank you. Happy Saturday. Oh wow. Children of Cain. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna love. You're gonna love everything that we go. That we are that we go into. Alright, um, it totally feels like a Sunday. Hope your weekend is a good one. I'm catching up with the children of Cain from the beginning. Oh, thank you. It's really, I mean, I love this book. It's amazing. Hi, my Kim, my Kim Lehman. I love you so much. All right, miss the live copy talk. It's okay, my love. Yay, on the shout out to Amy's Crypt. I, I love Amy's Crypt. I think she's amazing. Shout out Brittany Crab on the next one. Brittany Crab is also a really amazing. I really like her. Um, Amy's Crypt and Brittany Crab, I think are the most respectable. Um, paranormal investigators, um, and I, yeah, I just have a lot of respect for the both of them because of what they do. They go in, and Brittany's very, very, um, very respected, or she's very respectful of, you know, where she goes, what she does, um, so she does her research, she doesn't just, you know, f you know, break out a board, a Ouija board, and, you know, gets disrespectful. She is very cool, calm, collected, and I totally respect her that way, and I think a lot more investigators should be that way. Just like Amy. Amy's Crypt, amazing. Two amazing YouTube channels that I love. Okay, I had a great Thanksgiving. I did. I, I did too. It was just way, it was just too much. I ate way too much. Glad you did too. Oh, I love you. Great video as always. Thank you. The part with the scissors was very cool and interesting. Love her, the kid. I love her. She's amazing. She is amazing. I'm glad to put Chico on the prayer list. Thank you for the shout out. We'll keep 
him on there. Much love and hugs to you. Love you lots. I love you too, my, my big sister. I do with all my heart. Yeah, I mean, those two channels, Amy's Crypt and Brittany Crab, are amazing. I mean, these, yeah, and then, you know, we have the body modification community, too. So, I mean, we have Tristan Risk, we have Josh Burns, the Josh Burns Dragon TV. So, yeah, you guys got to subscribe to all of those. But, yeah, he's, I, I like Brittany, Amy, and um, Tristan, Risky, and everybody. Everybody. Jen and Sylvia, I love everybody. But yeah, I can't, yeah. I'm Switzerland but when it comes to everybody. I get along with everybody. I love everybody. All right, Lisa Oaks. Hi, I like your take on celebrating Thanksgiving. I think it's incredible. That's what I did. I focused on what I was very grateful for. It made me appreciate my family more, what I have, and the friends that I have, and the friends that have left my life for the good reasons, the ones that have abandoned me, the ones that aren't there for me. Um, I'm good. I'm really good since that's happened, since, you know, that the falling out of, you know, just, just different acquaintances, you know? new friends, new friendships, it's, it's a really nice thing. So things happen for a reason, and that's the greatest thing of, a, of all. But, alright guys. <laughs> mm. Alright, oh, I forgot, a little charm for you guys to do. So, what I want you to do, if you are feeling, if you think you're spiritually blocked, if you think you're spiritually blocked, Alright, so last night um, I did this for my friend, my very dear friend. Um, if you think you're blocked, if you think, you know, um, you're, you know, you feel like you're lagging and all this stuff in modern, you know, regular life, well, I want you to get one tea candle. One tea candle. Since the moon is going into the new moon, it's uh, decreasing, so whatever. Um, get yourself um, Blockbuster Oil. And this is my favorite brand, honestly, is Art of the Root. I don't know if you guys can see it. So that is Art of the Root Blockbuster Oil. And they're conjure oils, so they need to be shaken because they do have herbs and oils in them. And then this is Road Opener Oil. So, again, this is the Art of the Root. And then you're going to need one little quartz crystal. Cleanse it, program it to enhance everything. So, take your white candle, hold it in your left hand, put your right hand over it, think, okay, um, I'm unblocked, I'm unblocked. See yourself being cleansed, and then um, see your road being opened. So you guys know how to do the visualization, so see yourself being unblocked from any kind of spiritual, spiritual blockages, physical blockages, anything. Um, and then do it, do the um, blockbuster oil um, with a dropper, a little oil dropper, um, winter shins, counterclockwise around your little white tea candle. And then take your block butt or your um, road opener oil, do um, counter or clockwise around the candle. Um, take your name, take a regular paper, um, write your name nine times, and then turn it to your left because we are going counterclockwise. We are getting the blocks away. And then um, write unblock, 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 unblock. Nine times to cross your name. Fold it nine or three more times. Fold it three times away from yourself. And then put it on a fire safe dish. And then put your candle on there. And then charge your crystal. Put it next to it to amplify everything. Make it more that much more powerful. And then you can actually take it and you can do the old charm that is known in traditional craft. You can cut it out a little piece of um, like felt paper felt, um, yeah, felt, and wear it as a charm necklace or in your pocket, and it will help you to, um, the experience last night I, um, was the smell, because this does have something in it to open up your sinuses, because, yeah, obviously it did mine, and it, she experienced it as well, and we did it at the same time, so it was pretty interesting. We have covered a lot today, but that is my little blockbuster and road opener for you guys. <laughs> it worked. It worked for me. It worked great. Um, those oils work amazing. I love them. And it's just really, really amazing. So, but yeah. If you guys try it, let me know what you guys think. So, I'll see you all tomorrow. I love you guys with all my heart. All the way from Venus. All the way back now.
And yes, thank you all for all your amazing comments. I love you guys so much, and I will see you all tomorrow.